I'm going to start the recording then. Um, welcome everyone for joining. Uh, just a reminder, uh, the Purple WRT meetings are uh, recorded uh, and we post them online for everyone to be able to see um, so that uh, everybody knows what we're doing. Uh, to get right into the agenda, um, the SCAL follow-up, I just wanted to uh, check in. Uh, I just um, A lot of the discussion's been around uh, the event system. Uh, I, I talked to Felix um, and, and uh, to see what kind of work that uh, he might be able to do to get the event system uh, to a place where it's, first of all, good enough to for um, ADB to release uh, their uh, converter, their bridge, and then good enough for additional use cases where polling is not, is not good enough. So Felix, um, I don't know if you want any feedback or, or have you had any chance to look into that topic and, and work on a proposal? Uh, so I'm not done with the proposal yet, um, but I, I will hopefully get around to sending it this week. Okay. Um, it's based on pretty much what I what I wrote in in Basecamp. So mm -hmm. extending UBus to support object references to to be able to to track lifetime of event listeners, um, and then a system to basically be able to translate events generated on the system. So if for instance, for ADB's purposes, it is enough to cover detection of configuration changes. Uh, then in the, in the initial form, it could just be a simple translation of uh, changes done in UCI to actual data model changes, um, which I think uh, we can then incrementally uh, expand to any, any other parts uh, that ADB or the others might need. So it, it, it should be able to gracefully develop into a more fully-fledged uh, event handling system while also allowing to do polling for certain parameters where we need it. Yeah. Um, so, um, hi, Felix. Uh, are you thinking to do a demo, separated demo for this uh, purpose? Uh, have you thought about this uh, or do you have something in mind? So, um, it's it's it depends. So for uh, for handling caching and and uh, or, and polling of of certain parameters, I think it makes sense to keep that in a separate daemon. And I want uh, Scal to be able to basically act as a proxy for event translation. So um, in the end, for for being able to access events, uh, you go through Scal and you don't have to worry about other daemons. Um, but some of the actual implementation of, of handling parameter change detection uh, can be handled in other daemons. Yeah, okay. I, I also will prefer the daemon solution because uh, we also have a daemon for managing uh, events in our implementation at the moment. So for future developments, uh, I think that this solution could be preferable. And uh, I think that uh, we can scale also this and we can also uh, move this solution to other to other targets. I think so. I would prefer this. And uh, if on our side we are integrating at the moment the event notification in CM to Scal daemon in order to register our, the event notification to Scal and to receive all the events from from the UBUS. And mm. uh, so at the moment we have the set add del comments and uh, we need this event notification and then we need to set uh, to receive the, the, the reply from, from SCAL in order to have the event notification completed. I think so, that with the daemon part we can complete our work. If so you... uh, does your system allow basically registering for all the, the parts of, um, or of the data model that you're interested in, in receiving change notifications for, or do you need to be able to see all events globally on the system? Uh, yes, normally yes. I'm not sure that SCAD is able to manage all the possible parameters at the moment. I saw only an object as an example. I think uh, there is uh, the device management server object, uh, only that one. 
uh, I don't know, I, we can probably add some more object in order to have some something more to show. Um, so, so, yeah, we, we can uh, we can certainly do that, and I mean, it's adding more objects is just a matter of writing some JSON files. Uh, no actual code needs to be modified. But for yeah. uh, for event purposes, my question is more along the lines of, so uh, in, in your system, you want to be able to receive events. And right now, uh, Scal, I intend to, to implement the design in a way that uh, no events are generated unless something is actively registered to listen those event for those events, and uh, I want to know if this is compatible to uh, to the way that you're working with the system. So you mean that all the events should be uh, registered uh, on SCAL to to receive uh, these events? Uh, yes, you should re you should um, register. Um, basically, all parameters that you have, maybe active notification for, or where you need change notification. Um, I intend to uh, extend UBus so that you could basically register an event listener and then tell Scal, this is my event listener, and I'm interested in events for this object or these parameters. Um, so it's not on a global scale, but it's actually filtered. Yeah, I think that uh, could work because uh, basically we are so basically we are we have a data model based on TR 181. So we need any way to pass through SCAL to manage all our parameters. So I think that uh, we can register on SCAL for all the parameters that we need. And uh, yeah. I think that yes, it's. Uh, I think that it's a possible. It's a solution that could uh, suit our needs. Yes. All right. Well, it's good to hear. Um, and uh, Felix, I, I, we're looking forward to, to seeing that proposal and and uh, getting it so that uh, we can get the the ADB uh, stack out and continue the development of Scal. There's actually uh, two other things that um, we had we needed. We, I wanted to mention about Scal uh, related to this week. Uh, the, first of all, the Google Summer of Code uh, student uh, actually the project is going to be funded through Google Summer of Code. Uh, they're working on uh, I think it's the device monitoring. Um, it's Net JSON. Am I think? Am I maybe yeah, correct. Net NetJSON, yes. NetJSON uh, is, is, is the right thing. Yep, the, the device man, uh, monitoring um, uh, schema for NetJSON, it kind of solves a lot of, you know, does some, some of the similar things that uh, uh, TR69 does, but it is uh, it's a community run and has some use cases for some people. So that's going to be funded by, uh, by Google. And uh, Felix and I, have, and as long with along with Federico Capuano from OpenWisp, uh, all have agreed to provide uh, some mentoring for that. So that's going to be great, and we're going to get some additional plugins and use cases, and and hopefully some additional work done on Scale. And it's you know we'll get it done by a uh, by a student. So should be good there. Um, one other thing that came up it, it, this. And I think Felix, you may have been the only one who wasn't in the meeting. Is that there was some discussion uh, at the high-level API meeting, um, the idea of Scal being kind of a common, uh, I don't know, proxy layer um, for uh, different distributions of Linux, uh, potentially like um, the being used even on. Uh, RDK B. Um, the one question was the feasibility uh, of at some point allowing you to change to a different bus uh, system, allow people to mix and match effectively. Like some people want to want to do it in D bus. Can do you see this as something that's feasible? Um, just to, just as background, Walter did do a, a quick quick review of it, but. Obviously, and he felt it was it was likely possible, but certainly nobody has uh, 
looked into that? Uh, who who knows it as well as you? Um, so I I think it would be it it might be possible. I'm not very familiar with uh, with the internals of of Dbus, and I think uh, yeah, it it might be possible to do so. Um, there might all we might also have the option of initially prototyping this with basically a dbus to ubus abstraction layer that mimics the api and then we can see if this is actually worth doing or worth pulling pulling into the core so we we still have to see if the the models actually match um i i tend to to think that we should only do this if there are significant enough advantages to to doing so especially considering uh, that UBUS is really small, and I would just like to avoid any unnecessary complexity in the code. I see so a, a project in a project like this. I see a big potential for uh, fe feature creep coming in along the way of many people requesting different things, and with with uh, no like central central place where there's justification for all the features or no no real. Uh, decision-making process of what do we keep and what do we simply not add because it would increase the the complexity and the scope of the project unnecessarily mm -hmm. so in in terms of technical feasibility I think it's possible um, but I think we should look into which parts we actually need especially when I uh, when I move on to to add event handling there might be actually some mismatch between how Dbus works and how Ubus works, um, and I don't want to to uh, add limitations to the design early on in the process uh, that we might not actually need. All right, um, I know Walter and Bruce, you were leading the high level API group. I, do you have any thoughts or feedback right now? Walter and Bruce? Not, not a spontaneous feedback. I think one of the things that we wanted to achieve was, you know, how to get this to work both between um, OpenWRT and RDKB and mm -hmm. have a, using maybe Scala as a common abstraction layer. Um, but I think that we also need to, to look into it a little bit more before we say, I believe that Shuka was going to be taking a look at it during the next two weeks also. Okay. No problem, Walter. Walter, do you, Walter, do you, do you have any comments? Okay, Walter, it's, uh, I see his audio is dropped out. Walter, are you there? All right. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is this is kind of an interesting topic and we definitely want to be, you know, uh, we definitely want to want to do something that isn't going to cause uh, significant uh, problems to uh, scale or, and, and you know, hinder the growth, but also find the best use cases for it. So definitely uh, more discussions needed before we, we do anything, but it, it's good to, to get some of that uh, some of that sense as to is the you know is the feasibility and things like that. So, okay, well we will uh, we'll kind of put that on the side and and continue. Uh, Sukru will kind of evaluate that too, and kind of see whether there is uh, whether it, it's worth looking into more. I'm back here, by the way. In the meantime, um, oh. sorry, I had, I dropped out when uh, Felix was in the middle of his ex explanation, mm -hmm. and then when he all asked, "Are you there?" I turned out. <laughs> Uh, go to a meeting still have me muted even though I was uh, talking into a, a telephone uh, a telephone conversation um, so I missed what was said here uh, just now we will. I, I was I was willing to provide a background in the sense of what the whole purpose was to have a to have a debus backend into into scal mm -hmm. um, because for sure it would need to be it would need to be something that's optional and probably even modular uh, for only an environment where that's relevant, such as if you want to put SCAL on top of an RDKB system, and you would not have this compiled in or linked in 
uh, on an uh, OpenWRT system for sure. Um, that, uh, so, maybe it would be helpful if you were to share, if you have the possibility, the um, material that um, you showed at the meeting that we had with, uh, on Tuesday. Just have a quick, um, so that Felix has an opportunity to see what it looked like. Yes, I'm sure. Um, can Eric show my slides, or shall I try to? Uh, I can. I can do that quick. Yes, I will. Right. I'm going to find them quick. I don't. I think they're on Basecamp. Uh, not sure if anybody put them on Basecamp. I didn't think so. Um, then that may I not. Saw a couple of. Uh, I almost have them here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I have them. So if you want to give me presentation. Sure. I'll bring um, I don't know which one of your of you is the one to give presentation okay. power to. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll try to make this quick. Um, so we have the wireless drivers, we have the lower level API at the bottom. Uh, we have the user space utilities on top of that. Um, we have then in the case of uh, OpenWRT and LEED on the left hand side, you have UBUS and, uh, and UCI. And on uh, RDKB, you have the lib Wi-Fi hardware abstraction layer in, built in, linked into a daemon called the CCSP Wi-Fi agent. Uh, and that has a, offers a, a DBus API. So if you want to do DR69 or WebUI or something, you need some sort of a translation to the calls that you need to do over UBus into UCI directly towards uh, DBus. Um, with SCAL, the way I see it is that uh, on OpenWRT, you give the opportunity to give a, a pure UBus data model translating interface um, on top of that. So you could rewrite your interfaces. As you know, you have a standard translation layer, and you don't need to specifically be connected to UCI anymore. That's the way I see it. Correct me if, if I'm wrong. Um, the, what's being proposed here is, um, or what Suko and, and Bruce are proposing, is a new data model translation layer and a bus bridge interface so that you could uh, with a couple of uh, possibilities uh, one is that okay now you have a new API that would be standard towards all clients using that at the top but at the bottom you translate towards uh, the RDKB over DPUS uh, if you're on RDKB towards um, UCI and UBUS or over SCAL if you're on top of OpenWRT with even the possibility, actually, of having a dual system that's running both RDKB and OpenWRT, such as an OpenWRT in a container or in a virtual machine on a, uh, on a cable modem, for example. Um, I pointed out that that translation layer may not make any sense if you have a... So you should see this as either or, typically. Yeah? You'll typically be either on RDKB with a DBus interface at the bottom of this, or you'll be on uh, on OpenWRT lead with a UBus interface here. So what I pointed out is that you could solve this translation layer uh, by ensuring that the APIs the, uh, on RDKB and on on OpenWRT are very similar, or at least at, uh, at this layer, uh, meaning that you just need to do a, trans a bus translation if you wanted to, wanted to be able to convert from one system here to another system there. So write the same client that would, without any changes, without the diff using only one of the buses, work both on RDKB, which is the bus based here, and uh, OpenWRT, which is um, UBus based here. You could achieve that for this flow by, at the bottom of SCAL, replacing the UCI and UBUS, UBUS backend with a DBUS backend. And then you could uh, translate towards, in this case of wireless, the CCSP Wi-Fi agent interface. Uh, any translation of, uh, of 
function calls and, and events and, um, and data model parameters, you can do that with Scala itself. So I was pointing out that maybe this translation layer, this idea, can just merge into Scala. Maybe it's just a feature of Scala that we could uh, add to it. So I have, I have, if, you show, uh, if you show the next picture also, maybe developer, where you show where they've converged. Um, where you could one you call D. Uh, yeah, the the D is the proposal that I was doing. Okay, yeah. which was not to do this translation at all. And oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I should make I should make a slide E uh, that explains what we what we talked about a couple of days ago. Yeah. Okay, so go back to that one, yeah. So uh, the way that I see it um, with the way that Scala is designed, uh, you couldn't just stick it on Dbus and have it provide its data model basically as Dbus uh, object representations emulating an existing system. Because the way that, that Scala works, it, it works on a query basis. It doesn't publish anything that uh, that plugins have available. So it, you, you can basically just query the model and have plugins respond to those queries. And uh, that's basically incompatible with direct publishing on a bus system like Ubus and Dbus. That's why it has a separate de dedicated query API attached to it. So I think this uh, simply putting scale on Ubus will not work in a way to translate something else into uh, into objects like like for the CCSP Wi-Fi agent. So some extra translation might be necessary there as well. And because some extra translation uh, is necessary there as well, I wonder. Uh, what's the advantage of then still using uh, Dbus to connect to Scale, or are you only interested in allowing Scale to connect to things on Dbus? Um, I'd start with the second, and there might be a use case for the first as well, but it's not something that I was thinking of addressing. Okay, so basically just let uh, uh, add support for, uh, for instance, a JSON plugin to be able to reference things on Dbus and uh, talk to them. Yes. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good idea and that should, should be feasible uh, with the current structure with minimal changes and that's something that I'd support developing. All right, well, that's great. Um, do we, uh, we can talk some more at the next, uh, do we want to talk some more at the next high-level API meeting, Bruce and, and, uh. Yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Yeah, definitely. But it's, it, okay, then that's very good to know that we're kind of on the same page and this makes sense. Uh, from the person who designed Scale, this makes sense, so good. Um, all right. Okay. Um, that we will get back to the rest of the agenda. Um, I will, uh, I'm taking away your power, Walter, I'm sorry. Oh, I have to choose myself as, as the presenter. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, uh, the, uh, Carrier interest group update. Uh, we talked about the low or the high the software stack independent API right there, so that's not a whole lot. Uh, the low level API, I think most of us were there, but we, we talked a lot about um, how exactly we want to word the Wi-Fi API document. Um, one of the other ideas is that we may uh, at our face to face kind uh, try to find a few members of the of the Linux wireless community who might be interested in giving us some more feedback. Um, so I think that uh, that's kind of the, the main things we talked about the low-level API meeting. Um, but it seems like we're making good progress. One thing that we didn't discuss um, at either of the two meetings was the agenda for the face-to-face -face meeting. Yes. Uh, and one of the things that, um, at the very minimum, I think that what we should agree with, and maybe we can discuss it at this meeting or very soon um, know what's going on, 
is which are the actual subgroups that are going to meet, be meeting during the face-to-face. -face. I mean, obviously, these two subgroups want, want to meet. Mm -hmm. Are there other subgroups that have indicated that they are interested in that face-to-face -face meeting? So where that face-to-face -face meeting, right now we've discussed it being two days, mm -hmm. would it be for these two groups only, or is it intended that it would be these two groups plus a bunch of other groups as well? Um, the trust continuum uh, chairs uh, were interested in meeting as well and wanted to kind of just present what they're doing. I think that's that that one's for sure. Um, there may be things here that that th this group particularly feels that they'd like to do. I don't know. Um, that's kind of uh, up to the group. But those are the ones that I know right now. Um, if I have other people that say, yes, I absolutely want to, we think our group should be there or talk about it, I think that that uh, will do that. But those that's the big one other than these two groups. Because I think that at the very minimum, these two groups should get a dedicated day. Um, so that they like, can half a day for each one, and then the other day for the other groups. But that's only at a, as a minimum, depending upon how many, how much the other groups want to participate. Oh, I I complete, I agree with that. I think there would need to be a day for just uh, just this um, for these two groups. Definitely, I agree with you one hundred percent there. And, and I will send out the the proposed agenda topics. Um, I know that uh, Pasquale had suggested some additional agenda topics for the carrier interest group, just general, uh, not really focusing on either of the subgroups, but just the general topics related to uh, software for carriers and things like that. Um, more kind of like discussion topics. So I think that that would also be in that, that second day. Um, that would make sense. So I will send out, uh, my plan is to send it out today, is the list of the topics that have been suggested. Um, and then uh, I will also, uh, we're going to obviously kind of um, whittle those down. I mean, we're probably not going to cover everything in all those all the suggested topics, uh, but we will make progress on them. So. Yes, that's a good, that's a good point, Bruce. Sound good? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, the uh, We'll move on then, the purple feed. Uh, anything from your end, Bruce, on that? No. Okay. Um, no. That's fine. Um, anyone uh, related to Board Farm, the one thing that I wanted to mention was that there was a um, – uh, th that pull request that Matthew had sent is uh, has been merged. Uh, 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 Pedro, have you heard anything from Altran related to their their testing stuff? Hi, Eric. Yes, um, they are moving with it, and uh, they are supposed to start participating in a more active way the next week. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Glad to hear that. Um, and the board farm uh, work might uh, move into the, the security subgroup topic we'll talk about at the end. So um, we will we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, OpenWRT Summit had the meeting uh, yesterday. Uh, really good turnout. We looked at the sponsorship program. Um, we're, we're looking to get sponsors. Uh, the The different tiers will be the um, 5000 uh, 1000 and $500. Um, this is just to cover costs. This isn't to make money. Uh, it, it's simply that it costs a significant amount of money to put on an event, and we want to make sure that uh, we can cover those costs. Uh, so the the Platinum sponsorship is the $5,000. We already have one uh, committed, which is CZNIC. Uh, they're doing it kind of in kind as they are sponsoring the um, they're sponsoring the social event um, they assume that it'll actually be a little more than five thousand dollars but that's they're they're going they would be a platinum sponsor um, we we were looking for two others I think purple will probably be the one of the others um, but we would be certainly be looking for an additional so we're going to actually be sending around that uh, that document. Um, we're still kind of kind of working out the how we want to you know present it uh, as a prospectus to potential sponsors. But but the goal is to 
make sure that we can we can make a, a good event that is a uh, a couple days, uh, two days long, a uh, good event uh, that'll meet the needs of of the industry and community, uh, as we have as we tried to do the last two years. Um, a couple other things that we talked about the Open WRT Summit. We talked a meeting. We talked a little bit about the uh, technical, uh, the technical day. Uh, one idea that we had come up with um, was the idea of asking members, uh, particularly uh, committers, who have created features for for Open WRT Lead that haven't necessarily uh, put in. It's, they're not really well documented. We would ask them, we would encourage them to do a presentation, and then we would get some of the people, we'd have some of the people who are very interested in documentation to, in effect, document the details of the feature as that person presents it, um, and then ask questions. So it's, it's kind of like a, a documentation sprint, but not quite. Uh, it might be a little bit easier for some of the people who have features to um, to do that than documentation on their own because really all they're doing is is, is presenting on their feature. Um, I think that'd be a good way to get some of the really interesting features that are already in OpenWRT lead but aren't uh, really well documented to kind of get that information out there so more people can use them. Um, so that's kind of the the thing, the, the situation there. We also saw a proposal for a logo um, from uh, that uh, Sartura had uh, talk to a, uh, an agency that they know. Um, I can actually show you the design of the logo right now. Um, we're still trying to work out the details of whether, how exactly we want to uh, do it. Um, but the general design um, is that this is the sign, but the general logo is, would be that. Um, which I, which I personally think looks really good, um, and it's, it's really fantastic. So I think that is, we'll be going along with something like that. Any comments or questions at OpenWRT Summit? All right. Um, then the last thing is the purple WRT security subgroup. Um, for those who weren't here last week, Bruce had su suggested, um, uh, we looked at the document that Hauke had presented um, uh, the, from the, the German uh, government who had evaluated OpenWRT and, uh, and they had done some security evaluation and had some, some feedback. Um, and the idea that maybe that this is a role that uh, Purple can can participate in is um, evaluating the security of WRT and helping with a, a general uh, you know attempt to to improve it as in a collaborative effort. Um, I did ask some people. I haven't gotten a ton of response from Purple members. Um, the people that were in this group were very supportive. Um, outside of that, uh, I know that. Uh, the security subgroup is uh, the PEG is also looking at the idea of automated testing of devices in general uh, for security. So I think that there may be a connection there. Um, I think that the, before we we go too much farther, we should probably first of all um, reach out to the OpenWRT lead community to to find the people that should participate in this topic. Um, and uh, Felix, I don't know if you have any have any preferences or people you think we should, who would be really good to reach out to in particular, as well as the general community, to uh, participate in this topic. Any thoughts? I don't think I I don't think I have a list. I think it should be to the wider community mm -hmm. to make sure that nobody in particular feels excluded from this. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I think it should be open. Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay, um, we will do that then. Um, and uh, I think that uh, it would be good if we had um, we had some kind of as a as a chair of this group, uh, we're looking to be a subgroup to kind of uh, work work through first of all the that um, to lead the group, and and likely the first thing in that group would be to look at what was actually. Um, came from the German government um, and uh, understand the feedback so we can uh, either 
either you know some patches or, or make recommendations or, or whatever it is. Um, I think part of this also is is we need to kind of I guess whittle down what exactly we are going to target. There was a couple different things, um, and I wonder if, if we could have some discussion now uh, in the you know, 20 minutes left uh, on what what things we think this group would be appropriate for targeting uh, related to security. Well, I mean, I, I think that I think the first thing is uh, that I think would be would be good. I just to start it is is it would be good to um, have a general sense of of when we say that you know improving security, what's the list of of things that uh, per se could be tested, and um, so that you know I mean, we may want to base it off what the German government did, um, but then expand upon that as appropriate. Any other thoughts? I think that was my general idea when I suggested that we look at that is to be, begin by looking at that document and see what kinds of things that are being covered. Mm -hmm. um, so that's some of the things that they do take up are some of the Wi-Fi features, they take up some DNS features, you know, so they're more in the application space, mm -hmm. but still, I thought that was I thought that was maybe a good start for trying to understand what kind of security features there are that may or may not be of interest for for the community. All right. Well, uh, any other thoughts? Well, all right, I thought there would be more discussion, but uh, I guess we, we can go ahead with that um, as a, uh, a as the kind of general sense is, you know, a, a review of the document and then um, see where we can work together to uh, expand off of it for, you know, long-term improvement in a collaborative fashion. Sound good to everyone? Yep. Awesome. All right. Um, any other uh, any other topics that anyone would like to discuss? Since we are at the end end of the agenda that I had listed. All right. Well, hearing none, then we will uh, we will uh, end the meeting early, and people can enjoy the fifteen minutes they have before what could be their next meeting. Um, have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.